So here's an iPhone XR that does not power on, it doesn't charge. So we're gonna do a live stream on how to repair this phone. We're gonna go through the whole process of diagnostics, troubleshooting, all that good stuff. So hi, I'm Jesse from BCC Board Repairs. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the channel. If you're watching live, make sure you comment down below that you're here watching us. If you're watching this after, comment below that you're watching the replay. Also, uh, I will link to all my tools that I'll use in today's video down below, as well as how to get this t-shirt and some other cool stuff. I will also uh, take suggestions if there's any specific tools you want me to link to, because I know I don't have everything. Uh, I have a lot of new tools here as well. So yeah, so <laughs> let's get started with this uh, repair. So this XR or 10R, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't turn on. I already have it out of the housing. You know, one of the first steps when you're doing uh, diagnostics and troubleshooting is you never know what is bad inside of this housing. It could be, you know, a charging cable. It could even be the face ID flexes. It could be anything that can cause it not to charge. So you first want to rule out parts issues before you just start assuming it's a board issue. And the easiest way to do that is take out the board out of the housing and you have two options. You can put it into another housing, ideally an OEM uh, housing, which I have here. It's my tester housing. Uh, it's, you know, screen, a battery, charging port. Um, so let's try this one first. All right, and I do see uh, micro repairs is here in the live chat. What's going on? So what we can do is pop this into the housing and then um, kind of rule out parts issues first. This is the easiest thing you can do. You know, if you have a repair shop with, you know, uh, with multiple technicians, you know, some may not be at the level that they can do board level diagnostics. So swapping out parts is a simple task for anyone to do that, that is technically inclined, right? So let's plug in screen, battery, charging port, and that's it. We don't want to add too many variables here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the charger, which you'll see here on the upper left in a green line. What's up, Isaiah? I see you're here too. All right, so I'm gonna plug it in right now. You see that green number? It says 0 0.0133 amps and nothing's happening. I unplug it, it goes back to zero. Plug it back in, nothing. Okay, so definitely, so far it's not a parts issue. Uh, another thing you can do is run a TriStar tester. This is basically a tool that can scan the charging circuit or the uh, charging flex cable, charging port cable. So let's do this. Charging port pass. And then uh, second part is a TriStar Hydra test which it failed, if you click more, you see there's two lines that failed. All right, so that gives us a clue. Maybe there's something wrong with the charging circuits. So after you've done this, uh, what I like to do also is if you don't have a housing that you can pop the board into, you can still, if you're a repair shop, you should keep one of these as well. Keep a known good charging port flex, known good battery, and a known good screen. Have them labeled, ideally. I usually put green dots, I just don't have them on these. So you could also kind of do the same test where we basically ruled out any variables from you know the original housing. So we just plug in the bare minimum and do the same thing. So if you look on the charts on the upper left, the green number, same thing, 0, 1, uh, 3, 3, and that, no signs of life. Okay, so for sure it's a board issue, because if it's not parts issue, it's gonna be a board issue. Any functioning board should show some sort of life there. So next step is a DT880 or DC power supply. This is um, an equivalent to a DC power supply, except it only has USB port to um, 
as an output. There's only on and off. You cannot edit or change the voltage output, whereas a full-fledged DC power supply, you can. So this is just specific for iPhones, as well as some Android phones, if you got the right adapters for it. But this is a uh, iPhone 10 cable. So this is what a, the regular cable that comes with DT80 looks like. as a uh, battery connector and charging port connector. These two functions, one's for power, one's to prompt to boots, but I've kind of cut, cut up one off so that I can use it with the 10R. So this is kind of like a, wait, it doesn't focus, there it goes. So this is a, the same cable, except I sliced off the charging port part. And because the DT880 doesn't come with the XR cable, I kind of just made my own using the iPhone 10 cable. Wait, hold on, let me turn this off. Uh, I do see someone asking why I don't do uh, much Samsung board work. Yeah, I don't get too many, so um, that's why. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, essentially what we're doing now is simulating uh, a battery. So this will power the board through the battery connector. And based on kind of the behavior we see here, how much current draw, we can make some assumptions as to what the issue could be. So this is not a USB charger. I see a lot of people plug this into um, charging cable and plug it into the cable to the charger. That is not what this is. It's a separate function. It just happens to use USB ports because it's universally um, kind of easy to create this kind of product. So you see I have this plugged in and I push power and I instantly get about 355 milliamp draw before prompt to boot. A working phone should not, should be zero. So when I, uh, essentially when I apply voltage to the battery connector, there should be no current draw. But there is some current draw here. It's not a full one amp or two amp draw. So this kind of tells us that there's definitely a short, but it's not, it's maybe not a, a VCC main or VDD main short. Uh, it could be a short somewhere else because usually if you get a full short so you'll get like max current draw and sometimes depending on how much current draw you get you might have this thing like shut off or go dark just because of how much current is flowing through it but in this case we only have 350 so you know there's a short somewhere but you know it might not be um, BCC main or it could be just some other chip I've seen some chips not pull full, um, you know, full two amps or whatever. All right, so now I got a new uh, Seek camera from Seek. They sent this to me to use. So one of the nice things about it is that it connects to the PC itself. So that's why you can see that on the bottom left. So here I have the board. So here is the battery connector. You can see some heat in this area. If I move the board across, there's no, let me put it a little bit into focus. There's no uh, other signs of heat. That's just kind of residual heat or, but you can see the majority of heat is around here. And if I flip it over, there's still majority of the heat here. But one thing also is when you're doing this, you do want to remove all the stickers and foam and all that, so it kind of gives a better view. So let's go into the microscope and check that out. Uh, I see Leo's asking how much can I ben bench press. <laughs> all right. So yeah, let's see, we have 14 viewers. So yeah, do me a favor, guys. Uh, share this stream You know, on your Facebook page and the forums and the groups. Let's get some more people in here. All right, let's take off this foam. Also, don't forget to smash the like button. That'd be awesome. It helps the YouTube algorithm. All right, I'm gonna peel off these stickers. So these will melt with heat. All right, I see a lot of people have questions about the new <laughs> camera. 
It's, uh, it's actually the Seek inspection cam. It is a USB-C based camera. Uh, while I wait for this to heat up, this is the, uh, my preheater set to 120 Celsius. I like to set the board on here with the rubber facing up so that it can um, soften it and peel off real easy. So while that's happening, let me show you the camera. So it, it's just a, this little box here. It's USB-C and it, I made it, attached it to my seek stand so it can still be used, you know, hands-free. Uh, it does have a port here for like a tripod stand kind of thing. Although I have my own stand, so I just use this. It's uh, the one downside is it is $899, so $900. So <laughs> if you compare that to, you know, Seat Compact Pro, macro lens and stand, you'll be way under that. But I don't know. <laughs> All right, I see see a lot more people coming in. <laughs> Two dollar tip. Show us how much you can bench press. Well, uh, bad news for you is I don't have a bench press here. All right, uh, let's see. Wait, that's my dog. All right, this has been here long enough. So this makes it much easier to, also it's nice because it, the sticker stays on the rubber part, so then you can reinstall it afterwards real easy. Okay, so by the way, this is a board. I haven't done any work to it, so we're, we're gonna find the issue together. All right, so visual inspection. I don't see any signs of liquid damage so far. Everything looks clean. Uh, let's, let's peek under the sticker because this is usually where you can see if there's any liquid damage inside. It's also clean. All right, so the real question is, where is that heat coming from? So there's a short, short, when something's shorted to ground, it pulls current and that current flows where the short is. So what the, what the side effect to that is that it generates heat. So we need to see, you know, the source of that heat. Now I don't recommend, wait, not, let me reword that. If, if you're injecting voltage or power through the battery connector, there's a chance you might get trolled by the MOSFET or the, you know, the Yancey chip. Basically, you know, the short, well first let's, let's do this. Let's check where is the short. Let's see, it is VDD main shorted? So using my multimeter, I am in diode mode. Just off the top of my head, I know. This dot right here at the very top is VDD main. So if we diode mode that pin, yep, short it to ground. So yeah, we definitely have a VDD main short after all. I wasn't too sure about that being that it had low current draw. So being that we have VDD main short, let's see, let's check the battery connector. The battery connector is also shorted, although it does have a higher reading of 13 milliamps, whereas VDD main has zero. That's the ground. Uh, that's the bat VCC or whatever it's called on this model. All right, so we have a short on main. So here's what I'm gonna do is, let's get my DC power supply. Uh, hold on, let me change the cameras. I don't need this, but well, let's take a look at this one. Oops. All right, so there's my DC power supply. Uh, let me get my probes. All right, so my DC power supply is connected to these probes. Should be. Oh, 
I think I got unplugged. I got so many cables. Yeah, I got unplugged. All right, let's check the DC power supply. See how it's pulling like almost two amps. I'll let go. It goes to zero. So basically when you short these together, you'll get um, some current draw on the DC power supply. So what we're gonna do is try to inject voltage here into the uh, board and see where's that, um, where's that heat coming from. So if you inject at the battery connector, you might get a false, um, well, you'll get heat in other places that might not be where the short is, just because that's where the power has to travel through, like a kind of like a bottleneck, so to speak. So here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the bottom half of the board on the thermal camera, and the other half I'm gonna inject on that VDD main test point. All right, so injecting on VDD main, you can see the heat is coming from or near the battery connector. I let go dissipates, inject, and you can see my DC power supply is pulling 1.2 amps. All right, now on the back side, uh, let me see, I don't know where VDD main is on the back side. So let's pull up uh, ZXW. All right, let me change this camera out. Uh, all right, yeah, just go with that. iPhone 10R Polygon. All right, so here's VDD main. Uh, I need somewhere to inject without removing the shields. Since most of the board is under a shield, uh, I'll probably use this part of the board. This, um, how much voltage did I inject? 4.2 volts and three amps. But it, it wasn't pulling the full three amps. All right, so let's do this. There's a giant sticker here. If you haven't already, Smash that like button. Take this off. All right, so based on ZXW, one, two, three, four, five. So five pins. One, two, three, four, five. So Let's use this one. I'm just gonna expose this pad. All right, so that's my VDD main. Let's go back over here. If we get heat from the bottom part of the board, then it's pretty safe to say that the short is somewhere in that area. Let me inject. I'm not seeing any. All right, let me check different parts of the board. It's hard to make contact with that pin. There it goes. So I'm not seeing anything heat up, although it could be the shield. The shield does like to reflect on the thermal camera and make it hard to see. Let me look under the sticker. Oops, I wanna get it off in one piece. That's not gonna happen. So hey, if you guys those of you on the live stream, um, where are you guys watching from? Where are you located? I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. By the way, if you need this repair done, whether you're a repair shop or is this just your personal phone, I can get this. I do offer mail-in repair service. All right, well, can't really see in there. Well, let's see. 
uh, Great Britain, Toronto. Let's see, let's try this again. Now I'm gonna leave the sticker removed so you see some heat in there. Kind of hard to see. See Texas, Vermont, Mercedes, Texas. If you hard reset, can I can stall? No, if you if you do a factory reset, you lose all your data. No way to get it back. Here, let me try something. Let me change the setting on this thermal camera. All right, I'm injecting. I'll let go. Injecting. Wait, no. That's the one downside about a thermal camera. You can't use it under a microscope. For the most part. I mean, you could probably get creative and... I don't know, it does kind of seem like it's coming from in there. You know what, let's go ahead. Uh, it's the worst, worst shield to remove, but I'll all signs point to here let's do this if I put the top of the shield let's double check um, if you guys have experience with this model you'll know how much of a pain it is to remove that bottom shield and that's the one where we're seeing heat so I don't want to jump to that conclusion without verifying or kind of ruling out anything else I mean It does seem like and it has to be somewhere in there. I would say it's on, yeah, it's gonna be under that shield, which sucks because now we are risking <laughs> floating base fans. But oh well, let's, let's see what happens. All right, so to remove it, what I'm gonna do is add some flux on the sides. Comment down below have you removed this shield before? XR, bottom, back shield. What temperature settings do you use? I'll, re I'll reveal mine in a second. Hold on, change my tip. One thousand C. <laughs> yeah, same. All right, so let's add some low melt. This is a super low melt, 138 solder. Uh, I'll be honest, it, look, it always looks ugly afterwards, but I don't care. You kind of have to do this because you get a bunch of solder everywhere on the side of the shield. As long as it's functional after. Um, so there is a, a thought process of cutting the shield, but that's a lot more risky, in my opinion, to flow base, not flow base, man, but damage chips in the process. I've done it in the past and I, I don't like the process. So my personal preference is to just remove the shield with hot air. You know, everyone has their own techniques and methods. And I'm gonna use mine. All 
All right. What I'd like to do is kind of rest the board. Okay. Try to get all the solder joints you can. I love this knife tip because you can get a shield like this. Oops, out of focus. All right. Good enough. All right, so I'm going to use the Mijing board holder. And what I like to do is hold it so that it's right outside the, the edge here. Put it real tight. And now, it kind of sucks because that sticker is gone. It goes over baseband. I'm not sure how much it helps or, or whatever. Let's try it. All right, so my settings is full airflow and basically 450. At least I start at 450 and then increase it if necessary. All right, what's up everybody? I see more people are joining. Sweet, we're at 31 viewers. I think that's uh, the highest I've had in a long time, so. If you haven't already shared this video, let everyone know I'm live. We're doing repairs on Facebook, WhatsApp group, Telegram group, Reddit, uh, IRC channel. All right, so I'm gonna grab it here. Usually the hardest part is here down the middle. There's like a shield here. So if you just kind of focus on that, do that part first. Actually, if you saw my add-in review video, I kind of do one of these shields in there. I forgot what settings I need. I don't get these often, so... I always kind of rediscover my settings each time. All right, so this side, this side. I'm gonna guess we have a short at Yansu, being that we have a short on Bat VCC and a short on VDU Main, which is where both of these lines are connected to. Here comes the back side. I think the key here is to just keep the hot air moving and you won't slow based on. It's been a while since I've floated it even using hot air like this. I see the size coming up. I'm going to wait a little bit. I don't, also don't want that low melt solder to just go flying everywhere. It's really easy to fling it and cause more problems. All 
I almost there. Oh, I'm stuck. There it goes. Man, that was stressful. All right, we're inside. So do we see slaughter balls around base brand? Or is it just stray low melts? It looks like low melts from the side shields. Some solder balls here. I guess we won't know until we fix it. And then this will be an extra long video. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me kind of clean up some of the low melts. It's because it's very uh, runny, so to speak. I guess. Oh, sweet! I got a, another tip. <laughs> Thank you, thank you to Tiana Cruz, whoever you are, for the tip. We really appreciate it over here at VCC Board Repairs. I wonder if anyone can match it. All right, let's get some of this low melt. That's a lot. Oops. <laughs> you guys lose audio? Can you guys still hear me? Type a one in the chat if you can still hear me. I'm just trying to wick away all this. Access solder. Oh crap. Alright, is this you, Jake? <laughs> oh sweet. Got another another tip. Yeah, it looks like uh Tatiana is number one. Fan, she tipped the most. All right. Oh. And I gotta adjust my camera. It's always in focus. All right, let's just go with that. Where's my? <laughs> Unicorn. All right, so I'm just gonna clean up some of this flux around here too. And dry it up. All right, so now we got the shield off. The board has been sitting here for a while too, so it's cooled down. I'll do a little more visual inspection. I don't see no obvious burned components, no cracked chips. All right. All right, all right. So let's go to over here. Let's inject voltage again. So we're at 4.2 volts. Inject into BDD main. Yeah, look at that. All right, let's uh, remove it and then see if the short is cleared. So, before I do that, just for my sake, I'm gonna mark this dot here in this empty part of the board. I'm gonna add some flux. I'm gonna use 
Eventually one day I'll have one camera for each tool so I don't have to keep manually moving the camera. Alright, so let's get this chip off. Wait, this is the wrong, wrong tweezers. Oh, my hands are shaky. I'm not ready yet. There it goes. Paths. The board is coming loose from the board holder. The only thing I don't, I don't like about this board holder is how long it is. So if I need to rotate it, it's like hanging off my bench. Oh well, I'll just leave it like that for now. I'll fix it once I confirm the shorts cleared. Yeah, the shield sucks. Alright, cool. 30 viewers, 14 likes. Looks like some of you guys need to smash that like button. What do you guys think? Should I do a live stream every week? Let me know in the comments. So, let's check for a short. Bye. Oops. I was thinking about like on a set schedule just do a live stream or whatever repair I have. Look at that. So diode mode on BDD main gives me 289 whereas before it was giving me a full short. Or just for reference. Every day. <laughs> okay. Oh wait, let me check battery connector too. These are places we measured shorts earlier. And battery connector is OL because Yancey is gone and that's where the diode mode reading comes from. So, before I do that, let me just double check. Uh, we were having, let me rotate this. So what I'm going to do is just diode mode under um, I'm going to diode mode under Yancey just to make sure there's no other shorts on some other line because I don't want to install a chip and then we end up with the short somewhere else. So this whole row is ground. This line is not shorted. Uh, oops, slipped. Uh, these are all OL. And the whole row is OL. The next one's also OL. So when we have a reading, these three are all together. There's a lot of these that are together, so I'm skipping through them. These are, there's two grounds, or three grounds, I mean. OL, reading, ground, reading, and C. I'm mostly just checking for shorts. They're all ground here in the corner. That one looks normal. 
these are all the same line this is battery connector and oops yeah so 1.9 will read as ol sometimes so that's all fine all right cool um i do see these ground pads on the left are pretty large so here's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna put on the preheater So I'm gonna probably just wick this flat. Oh, wrong camera. By the way, I was thinking um, there's a program out there where I could stream uh, simultaneously to YouTube and Facebook. I was wondering, would you guys, uh, rather watch it through Facebook or YouTube. I mean, it'll still be archived and be on YouTube uh, after, but the live stream will be, and the cool thing is with those apps, you can uh, talk to both people from both uh, sites. I don't know, what do you guys think? If I'm streaming on Facebook, then you can directly share the video to the different repair groups. All right, I see one vote for YouTube. Well, technically it'll still be on YouTube um, streaming live. It'll just be also uh, at the same time on other platforms. I do plan on doing private live streams also on my locals community, which I don't know if I linked it down below in the comments. You guys should check that out though. Oh, it's all good. Ah, close enough. All right. Let me get my Yancey, which I have. Oh, I should stock up. Wait, where is it at? Actually, I did stock up. I just haven't sorted through them. Uh-oh. I dropped the chip. I see it. All right, so here's the chip. I have like so much lint and dog hairs everywhere. All right, let's place it. More flux. All right, I'm gonna use 350. To install this. So just uh, gently heat the area. There's a lot of flux too, so I do want to kind of be careful with applying too much heat. So it could start bubbling and bounce the chip out of position. Although it is kind of too high. Wait, hold on. Nope, it's kind of stuck already. Oh, 40 viewers. How many people can we get on here? Can you guys share the stream if you haven't already? Let's, get, let's try to get to 50. Great, more people are... <laughs> There's 39 now. Oh, well. Although I do think if I do it on a schedule, people will probably watch it more because they'll know when to expect it and maybe make time for it. Versus a spontaneous live stream. Oh, there it goes.
All right, let's bump it. Yep, it's installed. All right, let's see. By the way, if you're new to soldering, um, do us all a favor and make sure you clean all the excess flux on the board. Cause I don't know what it is about new people. They just layer on the flux and never clean. And then it's, then things don't work. And then they come, they show up here at my shop. I mean, like this is fine. There's still some on there, but it's not like caked on, which is so bad. <laughs> all right, let's see. This board is still kind of hot, but I do want to, well, let's check for, make sure the short didn't reappear. So diode mode. Crap, oops, moving. 260 something. Uh, battery connector, do we have a reading now? Do we have Yancey installed? We do for something. All right, so let's go over. Actually, I don't need a thermal camera anymore. I don't need this either. All right. So, uh, previously, you guys saw we have like 300 something milliamp draw before prompt to boot. Now we have zero. So this, so far, so good. This means uh, the VDD main short that was present is no longer there. But the next step is to prompt to boot. This is uh, basically, you know, triggering like the power button or if you plug in a charger. Although if you do plug in a charger and you have this connected, uh, the current draw will go through the charger instead of here, so we won't see the uh, boot up uh, current consumption, which is a key um, set of information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna short the power button pin, which I have memorized to be the third one here on the top row. And you can see the thing is going up and I can let go. And that looks like a normal uh, healthy boot up consumption. So being that it looks normal already, I'm just gonna stop it. I'm going to, here it is. Cons the consumption is normal, so we don't need DT8 anymore. We now test with known good parts. I see a lot of people who will fully test the device on the DC power supply, and then they see a reboot or they do weird things. Or it, so it's best to, once you confirm the Buddha consumption looks normal, you can move on from testing with that and test with actual parts. That way you don't deal with those weird issues. All right, and then we want this back. All right, let's uh, zoom back out. All right, so I'm going to plug in the charger. Look at that, that looks like normal charging. Uh-oh, it looked normal for a second. Did it come loose? Okay, something happened. But let's see if it boots. Yeah, so now time to check if baseband is bad. Let's see, do I have a pin code? Uh, I do. All right, guys, don't look. Here, let me do this. Uh, all right. Let's see. Would you look at that. Searching. <laughs> Service. Of course. Also not charging, which is weird. All right, let me unplug it. 
plug it back in. Hmm. All right, let's check further. See what's going on. I would like to solve the charging issue first. All right, let's see. Let me test with my DT880. Make sure there's no new short appeared. Okay. Prompt to boot. That looks normal. All right, so I wonder what it could be. Let me inspect the board, make sure I didn't bridge anything or bump something loose. The battery connector looks a little, oops, a little off. So sometimes when the battery connectors get warped, the pins here push inwards and under that plastic and it doesn't make good contact with the battery. So what I like to do is kind of push here on the opposite end and push down. It'll force this pin on the opposite side to stick out. And same for the rest of the pins. So it kind of gives it a little more Uh, so yeah, question is, TriStar Tester Pass, I don't know yet, I do want to check this first, that was actually next on my list. Alright, let's go back over here, let's see. I hope it's not Hydra also. All right, charging port pass. It's taking forever, so sometimes that means it's gonna fail. Warning. So it gives two different lines that fail, which are different than the first time. All right, so Brady's saying do it the other way. Oops. All right, rotated the board. Stopping at the same point. on very exciting live stream staring at a tristar tester same thing all right let me see um well, let me check something else so i did adjust the battery connector let me just check that see if that made any difference Plug back in. I need to see this. Also, this port is used, so I don't know if it's best uh, charging port to use. Yeah, look at that. It drops back down to zero. Uh, maybe it's Hydra. I did that mode, all the pads on the board. It's for reading good. I don't feel any heat from the hydro area. All 
Alright, hold on. It's easier. Oh, yeah, still searching. Alright. Well, so my idea is to fix the charging issue first because if I can't fix the charging issue, what's the point of fixing the basement issue? Which is pretty much you know fixable. Whereas the charting issue may not be. There's like some random hairs here. Alright, let's start off first by it could also be a bad install of the chip. I did kind of um, it did kind of snap in weird. All right. I'm going to probe all the caps around OL. What is this line? See what does this connect to? Yeah, I think that's normal. I'm right, not shorted. Just kind of check around here. All right. Yeah. So it's good. Uh, you know, this charging port could be bad as well. It is kind of beat up a little bit. And put it into my known good housing. If it does the exact same symptoms on this uh, versus the. I'll just leave the screen off for now. Yeah, exact same thing on this on this housing. So it's not um, it's not the port. Make sure the port is not loose or anything. Let's see. This was supposed to be an easy one. <laughs> oh, there's a short. Let's clear the short and we're good to go. All right, uh, what was I gonna do? I believe there's some lines here on the, um, on the charging port connector that go to Hydra. Let me check these. All right, so this one's supposed to be OL, 358, 358, 358, ground, 561. That one's normal to read as short, though. I think the way it's designed, it stores currents and it reads, throws off the meter. The arc line to solenoid, always gets you. Plus of these pins here. All right, let me let me check all these just to be sure. So also reads a short, which is also a speaker amp line. Mikey bus. Oh, these are low readings. All right, this one is shorted, which is this one here. 
Hydra DP1 con con N. Let me see, where does this go? Yep, inside Hydra. Anywhere else? There's a test point here. Let's see, let's confirm. That test point reads as short, which is the middle one. Yeah, that would more reading of uh, 0 0.004, definitely a short. Let's see, can, well, let's do this. Let's switch to, let's remove the CPU shield. I have seen Hydro fail on these, so it's not, although most commonly if uh, XR is not charging, it's gonna be Yancey. That's true for any device with, with the Hydra, usually Tigris or Yancey that fails in that. Um, whereas like iPhone 7 and older, usually TriStar that causes not charging. And eight and newer is usually Yanti or Tigris. I call them not charging, although not always. So I would say a good eighty to ninety percent is not Hydra. What? What is this? <laughs> Does that mean I've made it if I got spam now? Amazing. So I'm trying to get rid of it. There it goes. I've literally never had any spam like that. Well, I do get it on my videos when I post the video in the comments, but YouTube pick it, picks them up pretty quick too. Like they get deleted before I even go to report it. All right, you get the shield off. Save all these shields. Like that. Oh, I thought it was like a hole inside Hydra. I guess not. All right, let's do this. And it's pretty easy to. Well, according to uh, ZXW, that pin goes directly to Hydra and is shorted, so we can inject voltage and see if that's what heats up. So let's go back to the thermal camera. Let me turn that back on. Let's go to DC power supply. Now, I don't know what, I'm just gonna use 1.8 volts to inject into that line. And here's Hydra. All right, I'm gonna touch the pin and then touch ground. Yeah, look at that. You see that? Hydra. So that's fantastic. Now I do need, I do wanna use a preheater for this. So I'm going to temporarily put this uh, shield on it. What are people saying? Oh, uh, yeah, I put the shield, the shield back on. It's pretty simple. 
All right, so I'm going to use my preheater here to help me with the hydro removal. And here's the dot, so I'm gonna mark the Wi-Fi chip. All right, so this is gonna be fun. All right, so let me put some, hold on. Let me clear out this paste. I'm gonna put uh, one of my copper shims here to protect the CPU. All right. So I'm at 250-ish, yeah, 250 Celsius. Actually, let me rotate this. So I'm guessing, oh crap. I'm guessing the, the short on Yancey probably killed Hydra or something. I gotta be gentle or else it pops out of my heater because it's not shaped for it. Let's see. It slides over. I'll just try it now. We gotta clear this underfill around it so the chip can come off easier. Now there's many different ways to remove the chip, just like there's many ways to remove that shield. Uh, I just use hot air and prying. I know some people use an iron, try to get it off. I've seen people use a grinder, like a Dremel. I do like to clear out a lot more underfill around the CPU too, so it doesn't create, or it kind of helps uh, relieve any potential gases that might be kind of created in there. Oh crap, out of focus. Yep, I popped these, these off. All right. Um, I'm just trying to clear some excess underfill. I do wish there was a board heater that would hold the XR. most of it. I'll put a second one just in case. <laughs> all right also what I'm gonna do is all right so Hydra is right here these are uh, VDD main caps, so I could technically remove one and with no 
negative effect to the board. So like pop one off. I will have a uh, room for my tool to come in. And I'm gonna add some flux too. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do 380, 45. Essentially, um, pry up. Let's, let's see how this goes. Last time I ripped some pads. I right, gotta drop some fire emojis in the chat. <laughs> let's see if I get this off. There's no negative consequences. There you go. Like not coming off. Here it goes. Here it goes. No rip pads. Hopefully CPU is okay. See the fire emojis are coming in. <laughs> Off this underfill. All right, let me swap out my tips. Oops. So let's prep some of these pads. Crap, my cable got tangled, my iron. So hopefully this fixes a charging issue and then I just have to deal with baseband after. And we have a full fix. All right, so what does no end mean? Some unrefill bits here. There's a missing pad. Although I think that's NC. Yeah, NC. Not connected. So just to be sure, let's check this pin. Make sure the short is cleared. Let's do this again. <laughs> and it's OL, so there's nothing connected, but it's not shorted, so that's a good sign. It tells us that whatever was shorted to ground was no longer there, which is most likely this IC here. Now to install it, uh, let me use this orientation. I'm just gonna leave the pads like that and install the 
new Hydra, the U2. Comment down below if you still call call these U2 because this is not the right name. I don't even know how that even happened. I think someone kept calling it U2 after it was no longer called U2 and then as someone was probably you know, well known, so they just copied them. All right, let's just go with that. All right, I think it's uh, I thought it was a line, but it's not. Let's try that. So I'm gonna use the same. Three eighty ten. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. So the company who was bragging about there's no bloatware, and then they there's a. Uh, U2 album added. All right. We'll just install in a second now. There it goes. Oh my god, nuts. Crap. But the hot air is blowing into my hand too. There it goes, I see it. I just, I just assume that's installed because it's <laughs> not too long. Oh, sweet. Let's see. My mouse. My Bluetooth mouse is not awake yet. Uh oh. Of course, my Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. <laughs> not working. There you unplug it and plug it back in. The joys of Bluetooth. There it goes. Uh, let's see. Re Ports. Spam. Uh, there it goes. Well, I used to give us time for the board to cool down. Oh, it's still kind of hot. Hi, uh, hi, uh, VCC, JC, V1S, dot projector problem, fix it. Any update? No, I don't have any updates. <laughs> you might want to check with JC on that, but I don't have any dot projectors to even test with right now, so not much I can do. You guys would have to test it and see. But the real solution, well, the workaround that I found is just get one with older software. My glasses are dirty. All right, board has cooled down. Let's see. One, well, actually no, let's go back. We've installed Hydra, so now let's check again. Make sure that short did not reappear, or hopefully we didn't get trolled. Oh, probe is just dirty. 
Yeah, so there you go. It's not zero, it's not OL, it's 640 something, which actually matches the pin reading here. Well, ish, kind of close. The board is kind of hot, so the reading is slightly off, I think. All right, uh, let's go here. We don't need a thermal camera right now. Let me hide that. Hide all that. Okay, so go back to our original test. Actually, no. Let's do the DT-880 first. Is this thing even booting still, or did I kill it? Wow, now hour and 20 minutes. All right, so DT-80 says, no short before prompt to boot. But because we're dealing with CPU issues, really, we wanna see, do we get a normal boot up consumption? And three, two, one. Oh wait, I'm pin three, two, one. That looks normal to me. All right, has to jump up. Uh oh, sticking at 100. Oh, it's looping now. Hold on, let me plug in a screen and a battery. It's not, doesn't look good. Could be hydro is just not seated right too. Alright, let's see, let's plug in the charger. So, one of the things we deal with, with, um, look, it's charging. No image. Well, let me reset this chart. I plug in. I don't feel the CPU heating up, so that's good. Or do we have a bad screen? I mean, that looks like normal charging behavior. All right, no image. Oh, that's, looks like it's looping. And the backlight on. Yeah, who knows, let's see. Don't you love Hydro being next to the CPU? Oh, here we go again. Let's see. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't need news. We need a working XR. How do you... Why isn't there like an easy like report spam that just blocks everything? All right, let's see. This is diode mode. Let's dial the motor on this. That's good. I was checking for shorts.
I mean, it looks pretty good. All right, so what I can try is reflowing it. Maybe it's not sitting right. I did feel like I cut off the hot air a little soon, but just because I didn't want to uh, overheat CPU, which, you know, <laughs> it's just the risk when working so close to it. So let me try this way. I could also try another one. Maybe I'm lucky in just a defective Hydra. Or some. But of course, it'll happen while I'm recording the live stream. So I, could, I could fix a million devices in a row successfully, and then I do one live stream and it <laughs> doesn't work. All right, let's, see. let's try it again. All right, so I'm gonna reflow it. I'm gonna make sure I can bump it and it's installed. Yeah, I know that's uh, also another technique is to install it with lower temp solder. I'm really hoping I do see the chip move even more into place, which will tell me that it wasn't installed properly the first time. I have this look installed now. I did bump it a little hard. Let's see. Maybe this will reflow the CPU back into place. <laughs> I don't know, man. Try this again. All right, what do you guys think? Is it gonna work? Do we just end this live stream, call it a no fix, and you guys learn what not to do with the XR with the bad Hydra? Or at least you guys can see the risk. <laughs> yeah, send thoughts and prayers by smashing the like button. Twenty-two likes. Uh, all right, I think that's uh, still pretty hot. You guys want to see me try a CPU reball on this, even though I don't know how to do them. Plus, there's still base fan on the new fix. Uh, 
I mean, everything, there's no solder balls or anything else. There's a solder ball here for some reason. All right, it's kind of cooled down a bit. Let's check this. Grab so many cables. All right, let's check this uh, DT80 again. Let's prompt the boots. Three, two, one. Oh, it's hanging at that 103-ish. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna say the same thing. Yeah, go back to zero. Fantastic. Did you guys love this? This is a battery. All right, plug in the charger. Same thing. I suppose I could just try another Hydra just to be sure. Although I don't know if these symptoms point towards a bad Hydra. I mean, everyone's saying rip CPU, but I don't know if we were just saying that. <laughs> Obviously there's a chance, there's a high prob probability it's CPU. Yeah, nothing. Cool, what if I just turn this live stream into a Q&A? Uh, right side of the screen doesn't have touch. Try a new screen. Uh, yeah, I don't know if PC will detect it. Let's find out. Well, the current is looping, so I don't think it'll be in DFU mode or anything. I might also try the DFU cable. And unplug it. I'm plugging in the DFU cable. And it's not detecting it. But what we can do also is uh, hold on. Actually, let me show you guys this. I mean, it's not going to solve anything, but here on ZXW, if you go to the search here at the bottom, type in DFU, find the one that says force DFU, and then inject 1.8 volts into it, and then we could force it into DFU. So let's find. All right, so it is the first one of these four. So I'm gonna inject 1.8 volts here while plugged into the PC. And we'll get into DFU mode. So, oh, actually let's do this. I have three tools here, DC power supply set to 1.8 volts. Actually, let me flip this over. Some ground. Does it work? Let's 
in any current draw. My mirror's unplugged. Alright, even that's not working. Hold on. Let me try one more time. Yeah, so there you go. Now let's see this. Actually, let me plug in the battery. Let me plug in uh, DT880 instead. <laughs> Someone want to uh, give this guy any tips? Taking forever. But in case you didn't know, that's how you can force the device into DFU mode. Uh, it's, let's say you have the board out just like this and you don't want to plug it into a housing and do the whole button combo to try to get it into DFU mode. Uh, if you just inject voltage into that line, you will force it into DFU mode. Although being that the, the symptoms is doing right now, I would say High chance is gonna fail here at 11%. And my Bluetooth mouse disconnected again. Oh, look at that, 16%. mouse doesn't work or else I would switch the view. Alright, I gotta figure out a better mouse solution. Right, so the device is not connected right now. I should have plugged in a screen. So we can see the Apple logo. I'm gonna just plug it in. Yeah, I'm gonna assume that it already failed by now. I'm definitely not going to sit here and wait for it to fail. <laughs> I'll just stop it. Alright, let's try again. It's currently disconnected. So let's put it back into DFU mode. If I could. Is, uh, not working. Where else? All right, let's try again. I'm gonna try it since flash this time. Retain user data, flash. So, do we get an Apple logo?
All right, so we're still at 12%. At this point, there would be no Apple logo still. Not until after the next step. It'll disconnect and reconnect, and then you'll get an Apple logo. Assuming I can get to that stage. All right, see the backlight came on. And Apple logo. I bet she's gonna disconnect here at 21%. Yep. Oh, here we go. Uh, loading micro iOS operating system in RAM for restore. All right, give me an error code. I'm gonna guess 2009 or 4005 or some weird, uncommon error code. Although, um, yeah, although Apple logo is a good sign, it's not necessarily a, <laughs> that good of a sign. Um, I wouldn't say it, it's, it's, I would say based on the symptoms, it's neither here or there. If it would have stayed the Apple logo and like kept flashing, then yeah, it's a good sign. Uh, just the Apple logo by itself coming up between the, you know, 12 and 20% doesn't necessarily mean anything. In my experience, I don't know. Man, this takes forever to fail. Let's see, what is the error code? Yeah, who knows what the issue is. Fortunately, I'm not at the level to do you know, CPU work and stuff like that. If I had more time, I could practice it, but it's kind of one of those things where you really have to dedicate a lot of time to practice and kind of research and all this stuff. It really is taking forever to fail. Hmm. Well, if, once this fails, I'm gonna call it a day. I think this live stream has been long enough. I'll keep messing with it. Um, I don't know where, I guess I'll post in the group somewhere, in the Facebook group. So if you're not already in there, join the VCC Facebook group. I'll post an update there. I'll post it here on the live chats and it's also linked down below in the comments um i'll let you guys know where i end up with this if i need to also i'm not too sure if the customer even cares about data or if it was just a repair i'll need to double check that although if hydro was bad um, I probably wouldn't have connected to the PC the first time I got it to boot. Uh, I know Hydro has a lot to do with the USB communication, so it had to be replaced anyway. So let's see. It's also dinner time. <laughs> Here we go, some more bots.
I wonder how many people actually fall for those spam bots. Like, does someone actually read that and actually type that URL in their web, in their browser and hope? <laughs> Three fifty six AM. Yeah, I never seen on XR the coils be the culprit. I've seen it on ten, iPhone ten and I think yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, well, I don't know why this is taking forever to, to fail. I'm curious for the error code. All right, if it doesn't fail and give an error code within the next minute or so, I'm just gonna call it quits. Well, I mean, I'll leave it, but I gotta go. <laughs> all right, guys, so, I mean, meanwhile, I do appreciate all you guys sticking around here till the end. I do see there's uh, 39 people watching live that's pretty awesome I usually don't I think I'm usually around 20s lower or 15 to 20 so um, what do you guys think should I do more live streams hopefully they're not disasters like this one I was thinking maybe once a week maybe like I don't know every Tuesday at 5 p.m. or just uh, recorded video content, which is a little more edited and more kind of straight to the point. I mean, type of one in the chat if you guys found today's uh, live stream helpful, even if I wasn't fixed per se. I mean, I did cover a lot of topics and I did show you guys my new thermal camera. This little thing over here. One thing I don't like about it is I do wish the port, here, let me switch cameras. I wish the USB-C port was back here. Crap, let me close this too. I do wish the USB-C port was back here. That way I could just run the cable out that way. Um, the focus on this is a separate piece here. You gotta like align and twist. And they do say that if you twist it too much, you can potentially uh, lose the, the camera itself inside can fall off. Um, so I would do wish they had an option to like attach a macro lens or something to it. Uh, I do wish the flanges or like these mounting things were like big slots. That way I can run zip ties to it a lot easier versus me getting these paper clips into these these holes here and you know, trying to get it to somehow mount but it does fit nicely here on my seek stand um, it is within range of the height so you do have to pretty much go all the way to the top to be able to be within focus range um, but it's 899 so that's way too expensive for when you can get their same product and this for like half that. So, I don't know. I did give them my feedback, so maybe they'll create a version too. But um, yeah, yeah, this thing is not failing, so I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. I do appreciate all you guys sticking around here to the end. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll try to post an update in my Facebook group as to you know where I end up with this case. So thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you guys smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I link to a bunch of stuff down below like t-shirts that are repair related. Also uh, my new locals community um, where I post you know exclusive content there. Um, you know, a bunch of other cool stuff. Like a link to a lot of these tools that I use in today's video as well. So uh, you know, thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Maybe I'll do it next week. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell. All right, bye guys.